Hello everyone and how's it going? In this video, we're going to talk about JP Morgan Equity Premium Income ETF trading under the ticker symbol JEPI and how does it compare to other like similar ETFs such as SCHD. When it comes to investing capital in financial markets, individuals often have diverse objectives. Some seek substantial growth in share prices while others prioritize stable and predictable cash flows. For retail investors who lack the technical and financial expertise to pinpoint promising individual stocks, ETFs offer a more transparent and accessible solution. Rather than searching for the needle in the haystack, ETFs allow investors to tap into a diversified portfolio without the need for in-depth knowledge of the intricacies of each stock. One such ETF catering to investors' needs for stable and attractive yields is JP Morgan's JEPI. It launched in 2020. This fund is specifically designed to address the demand for a reliable income source. The primary objective of the ETF is to build a diversified equity portfolio characterized by low volatility and undervaluation compared to the broader market. Notably, the fund is managed by seasoned professionals boasting more than 60 years of experience combined. The significance of such funds would become apparent when considering the portfolios that prioritize stability and also diversity in the asset exposure. Investors aiming for a balance between risk and return can massively benefit from JEPI strategy which combines the expertise and the experience of the experienced fund managers with a focus on constructing and building a resilient and varied equity portfolio. So diversification is certainly a key principle in uh, investment strategy that JEPI employs. It is achieved by spreading investments across different assets, reducing the impact of poor performance in any single investment on the overall portfolio. The JP Morgan ETF, with its emphasis on constructing a diversified equity portfolio, aligns with this principle. By investing in a range of equities with varying risk profiles, the fund aims to mitigate the impact of market volatility, providing investors with a more stable and resilient investment option. The ETF's commitment to low volatility is particularly appealing for investors who want to prioritize consistent returns and wish to avoid the turbulence associated with the less predictable market movements. The, this emphasis on stability is underscored by the fund's careful selection of undervalued stocks, aiming to provide investors with an opportunity to benefit from potential future profit appreciations. A notable feature of the JEPI ETF is the professional management team, each having about 30 years or more in experience. The expertise and insights of these seasoned professionals do contribute to the fund's ability to navigate very complex market conditions and to make informed investment decisions. This management experience does provide investors with a level of confidence in the fund's ability to meet its objectives and to deliver stable yields over the long term. JEPI offers retail investors a valuable tool for achieving stable and attractive yields in the portfolios. By focusing on constructing a diversified equity portfolio with an emphasis on low volatility and undervalued stocks, the fund would align with the goals of investors seeking a balance between risk and return. Before the video continues, if you would like to see more stock analysis videos like this one, please remember to like, comment, and to subscribe to my channel. Now, with that being said, here's the price action. Over the past five days, JEPI has seen a 1% increase, showing a steady uptrend. Now, if we zoom out to the 30 days, this increase extends to about 0.5%. Over the past six months, there has been a slight dip of 0.14%. And as of now, JEPI is holding strong at about 
like $55.30. So what really caught my attention is the rebound from its lowest point on October 27th, 2023, hitting $51.51. .51. Since then, JEPI has been quite resilient, bouncing back from this low point, indicating a potential uptrend from now onwards. That being said, let's also talk about the fees. JEPI comes with a fee of about 0.3%, and compared to many other alternative funds like SCHD, is five times higher. But here's the twist. JEPI's holdings are predominantly large-cap stocks, with no single position exceeding 3% of the portfolio's capital. It's kind of very impressive when it comes to diversification among the giants. And frankly, with just one title, with just this one ETF, investors would have access to a very diversified portfolio concentrated on distributing yields. And here's what's also kind of interesting. The current yield ranges between 7 to 9 percent, significantly higher than the one of SCHD, about 4 percent. Now you might wonder, why would investors consider JEPI for higher fees and a shorter track record since its inception in 2020? So the answer is quite simple, the yield. In terms of the sector, JEPI strategically positions itself into places like consumer staples, healthcare, financials, industrial, and informational technology. Those are proven sectors of the economy, and JEPI invests in companies with substantial cash flows and underrated pricing. This approach aims to secure a position when the prices are low, while capitalizing on the high dividend yields. Essentially, JEPI offers a unique blend of diversification, resilience, and tempting yields. The fees might be on the higher side for sure, but for investors seeking reliable returns and exposure to proven sectors, JEPI could be a pretty compelling choice. With that being said, here are the technicals. The trading volume of JEPI, so JP Morgan Equity Premium Income ETF, has been around 3 million shares, and the average volume has been around 4 million shares. Over the previous 52 weeks, the price fluctuated between $51.38 and $55.97. The volume of shares traded tells us how many shares are being bought and sold at any given point in time, and if there's enough liquidity to support any trading strategy. If the float is too thin, it would mean that pushing the stock price around would be easy, but exit would also be challenging. So when we compare the current volume against the average volume, there might be the possibility for trend reversal or breakthrough if we see a large difference between the current and the average volume. The asset under management of JEPI is currently around $30 billion. When we compare the current price to the historical price fluctuations, the stock is 1% higher than the one-month low, 7% higher than the three month low and 7% higher than the 52 weeks low. The put call volume ratio is about 124%. The most recent volume of options traded is about 1.3 thousand contracts a day uh, compared to the 30 day average of 1.5 thousand. For the open interest, the most recent volume of open interest is about 35 thousand contracts versus the 30-day average of 27,000. As for the shareholder structure, in institutions currently hold about 52% of the outstanding shares. The biggest shareholders would include Morgan Stanley, Bank of America, and JP Morgan Chase. Typically, it's always encouraging to see some institutional participation when holding a stock for the long term because it would offer a layer of stability and a token of reliability in the medium to long run. It would mean that the market is confident that it will deliver value in the long term, which is a very important factor to consider for the investors. I personally consider that the minimum threshold should be around 25-30% to 30 of institutional ownership, although there are many exceptions to this rule, as there will always be great companies mostly owned 
by retail traders. The current short interest is about 1.1 million contracts of the total float 60% of the transactions from the dark pools. Now, usually, if the short interest is more than 15%, we can say that there might be the case for a short squeeze. It's not the case right now at all uh, because the interest is so right now, the global markets are facing a complex interplay of factors that have the potential to significantly influence the equities worldwide. In this speculative analysis, I believe that the consequences of the global inflation, surging commodity prices, and decline quantitative easing, as well as the rise of inflation rates or interest rates, plus the geopolitical instabilities, are going to play a significant part. The increasing inflation rate has been putting pressures across the globe, threatening the purchasing power, raising the input costs, and impacting corporate profitability. Companies operating internationally may face challenges in managing rising production costs and also to sustain profit margins. Those dynamics could trigger market volatility as investors adjust their risk return expectations. The upward trajectory of commodity prices, including energy, metals, agricultural products, have been having far-reaching implications for various sectors of the global equities market. The companies heavily dependent on these commodities may experience squeezed profit margins, potentially affecting stock valuations and investor sentiment. The reduction or the end of QE's quantitative easing measures by the central banks worldwide may have resulted in reduced market liquidity. So this in turn could lead to higher borrowing costs for companies seeking capital, which may also discourage investment activities or will. The elevated market volatility plus the reduced investors' appetite may also continue to occur. Now, the central banks around the world are tackling this delicate situation of balancing the inflation rates with the economic stability and, if possible, growth. Central banks opted for aggressive interest rate hikes to combat inflation. Borrowing costs for companies have been rising, which has also slowed down business activities and also fueling the market's volatility in terms of the equity prices. Now, ongoing geopolitical tensions, including trade disputes, political uncertainties, and social unrest, will inject an additional element of volatility into the global markets. Investors may adopt a cautious approach, shifting towards safer assets, impacting the equities. Additionally, the escalating conflicts may disrupt supply chains, negatively impacting the performance of international companies. Given the interconnectedness of global markets, the aforementioned factors have reverberating effects on the U.S. equities market. Companies with significant exposure to international market may face a lot of headwinds resulting from the economic slowdowns, disrupting the supply chains and the currency fluctuations. But nevertheless, the U.S. market is known for its resilience and the diverse sectors may attract investors seeking safe havens. So really, the current landscape is characterized by global inflation, surging commodity prices, surging commodity prices, reduced quantitative easing, rising central bank inflation rates, geopolitical instabilities, and also ongoing lack of certainty regarding growth. While the U.S. market may exhibit relative strength due to the safe haven status, it's going to remain interconnected with the global economic landscape. For long-term investors, these conditions may offer opportunities to identify undervalued companies with strong fundamentals and international diversification. That being said, short-term trades should be approached with caution because of the increased volatility and uncertainty. And also, we should be careful when assessing individual companies, 
sectors or regions. Overall, my position regarding JEPI is that it is an ETF that can be bought as an alternative to other dividend ETFs, such as SCHD or VIM, as a stabilizing presence in a portfolio with a higher yield. The current price can be used as an entry point, but keep in mind that the stock market is expected to undergo significant volatilities in the year to come. So it would be prudent to keep some capital for the market afterwards. I would recommend to commit between 10 and 15% of your portfolio and would recommend splitting the allocation in batches of 10 to 20% at a time over multiple months to profit from any retracements.